Hey guys, welcome back to the Creating a Sports Betting Model 201 series. This is part two in the series, and it is all about data collection. For those of you new to the series who might not have watched the first video, Reality Check, go ahead and watch this one. And please, for the love of God, hit the like button on this video, share it, subscribe it, because like I said, these videos take a lot of effort, and they typically the videos I do in this realm don't get a lot of views or engagement and don't produce a lot of ad revenue. So if you want me to continue to do these types of videos and uh, see the series all the way through, please hit the like button, share, subscribe, all that. Make it worth my while. Make me motivated to keep pumping these types of videos out. So with all that being said, the reality check video is part one of the series. Now we're on part two in section one, and that is data collection. Now this is probably the most important uh, video of the entire 18 uh, part series of this uh, subject, creating a sports betting model 201, and it is the most frustrating, the most stressful, the one that requires the most amount of patience. Now, guys, I am a professional data scientist, uh, data analytics consultant. That's what I do for a living, and it's what I've done for a living for a while, and I can tell you that data is expensive for a reason. Data is currency. Data is what makes the world go round. And that is why data is so important. But the thing is, data is not free for a reason because it's currency. Why would you give away something that is so valuable for free? And so that's why creating sports betting models today in 2022 is so hard because it's so hard to obtain data, especially for some certain sports. Now, it really depends on the sport uh, when it comes to data. Now, Major League Baseball has their StatCast website to where you can download play-by-play -play or pitch-by-pitch -pitch level data for free. And Major League Baseball is ahead of the curve on that, and you got to give them the pat on the back because you can do a lot with that data. It's what I use for my baseball model. But other sports are a little bit more different. You have to use third-party packages um, like NFL Scrape R, or NBA Scrape R, you know, R Python packages that scrape the web for these statistics. But since they're third party and not affiliated with the sport itself, um, there can be holes, there can be gaps, there can be issues. Uh, but at the same time, it's free. So that's kind of the thing with free data sources is that yes, they're free, but there can be issues. Like in college football, the data source I used this past season is part of a crowdsourced effort, uh, collegefootballdata.com. They do a lot of good work, but they scrape their data from ESPN, and there's just a lot of gaps in that data. There's a lot of missing games, a lot of missing statistics, a lot of errors, a lot of problems, which required a lot of um, kind of back-end data cleaning efforts to get the data as presentable as possible. But even then, you're still missing a lot of games and everything. And in college football, missing a game is a very big deal because um, – I think one good example is UNLV. We were missing a couple of their games early in the season, uh, games they got blown out in. So in the future, uh, UNLV was uh, being bet on a lot with my model because we didn't have those games they got blown out in uh, showing up in the model and weighing their stats down appropriately. So that's, that's another problem. But again, it's free. And then you have paid sources. But what I've learned is a lot of these paid sources um, – are not worth the money. I'm not going to call them out. I don't want to, you know, disparage their business. But there is one uh, source I tried to pay for in baseball last year before I used these Statcast data from MLB, and they were horrible. They had a lot of uh, errors, a lot of problems, a lot of uh, things wrong, and like, okay, this is. But it was like I want to say ten bucks a month for the baseball data, and then you have uh, sources like Stats Inc. that are going to cost you tens of thousands of dollars that are mainly used for business purposes and therefore are not realistic options for people like you and I who are just doing this as a hobby trying to create a sports betting based model everything like that you know unfortunately there's just not much you can do there so it's about what is the best data you can find the most complete data you can find at the most reasonable price obviously free is the best way but um, sometimes you might have to pay to fill in some gaps but every model I have made has come with free data you got to find a way to obtain that data though College basketball, I scrape box scores from the NCAA website writing a scraper in R. Baseball, like I said, I downloaded the StatCast database. College football, I, I did it through the collegefootballdata.com website. Regardless, you got to find a way to obtain data, and that can be very difficult. It can be very time-consuming. It can be a major headache. Like I said, when I created my scraper to scrape the NCAA website, I did that in 2010. 19. And so when I tried to do it for 2020, I was getting a lot of error messages. You know why? Because games are being postponed, games are being canceled due to COVID, and it was causing the scraper I had made in 2019 
to backfire because it did not account for the HTML column that uh, would put a canceled game flag on the box score on the website, and therefore it would ruin everything. And I want to say they added like a column for technical fouls or something on the box score, and my scraper didn't take that into account. So it's always like a house of cards, a never entering revolving door of things you just have to stay on top of if you're using the scraping route. And it can just be very stressful, very frustrating obtaining that data. But you're probably wondering why I'm doing this video, the data collection video, before the brainstorming and preparation video, because the data you're able to obtain is going to influence what you can do. There's no point in thinking about ideas of how you want to run your model, what you want to project, what you want to predict and everything like that. There's no point of doing that if you can't get the data to support that. You can only go as far as the data you collect and therefore the data you collect is going to influence what you can do. But this is by far the biggest bottleneck, the biggest source of frustration, the biggest thing that makes me pull my hair out. And honestly, data is the reason I don't really dabble much these days in sports betting models because it's just not worth the headache for me anymore. It's not worth the stress. It's not, like I said, it's a house of cards. Like if your data source changes like one thing, then you have to rewrite your entire scraper or you have to redo all your code to accommodate for the new column or the new structure of the data. It's just, it's frustrating. It's very hard and it requires a lot of patience. So if you want to build a sports betting model and see the process all the way through, this is like the biggest hurdle you have to jump over. And really, once you are able to jump over the data hurdle, I don't want to say it's smooth sailing from there, but it, that's that's the biggest obstacle. And it's, uh, it's not going to get any worse from there, but just keep that in mind. When building a sports betting model, for in the past, data is always a thing that has uh, kept me up at night. It used to not be that way. 10 years ago, it was a lot easier to scrape this data because most websites still use HTML-based data. But in today, a lot of it is JavaScript, which I don't know how to scrape, which is very annoying. But like I said, I wish more sports followed MLB's lead and had the StatCast type of page where you can just download a giant CSV file full of all the information you need to do analytics with. But unfortunately, the other sports, they're not doing that because like I said, I understand data is very expensive, data is very valuable, so why give it away for free? MLB decided they're going to do that, but the other sports not so much. So you're probably watching this video probably wanting me to tell you, okay, where are the best places to get data for X sport? I'm not going to do that because honestly, if I knew, I would tell you. I don't. So therefore, you have to find, you have to find ways. Use the NFL R, Scrape R package or the N, NBA Scrape R package or the NCAB Scrape R package. Those can all get you started. Stat, StatCast on MLB can get you started. Um, I'm sure there's an NHL source out there uh, if you Google. Um, that's up to you. Like I said, if it were that easy, I wouldn't need to create the data collection video. If I could just tell you where to find data, this video wouldn't really need to exist. But unfortunately, it's a major headache. It's a major source of frustration. And honestly, the main reason why at, at the moment, today on January 16th, 2022, I have bowed out of the sports betting model game for the time being because I just got tired of dealing with the hurdles and obstacles you have to clear in order to get the right data you need to build these models out. Like I said, there's a lot of resources out there, sports reference and uh, but uh, Ken Palm, stuff like that. But like I said, those can just get you started. But there's a, like, for example, NBA, you really, or college basketball, you can get away with just needing the box score. You don't really need play-by-play -play data for basketball. I mean, it can help in some applications, um, but for the most part, all you need is a box score. But for MLB, in my opinion, I really think you need play-by-play -play data. NFL or college football, I really think you need at the very least drive level data, but preferably play-by-play -play level data to really get the statistics you need to analyze. So some sports you need less data, but some sports you need more. And like I said, finding that play-by-play -play data for NFL and college football can be a major pain. And that's just why it's a headache. It really is. So I hope you learned something from this video. I think the point of this video wasn't so much to tell you where to get data, but just to warn you about how annoying and painful data can be. And even someone like me with a strong statistical and analytical background stays up at night trying to find this data. It's a total pain. And um, like I said, you can only go as far as the data you can find. So there are sources out there if you Google them and you just have to make them work. So I hope this video is helpful. Again, like, subscribe, share, make these videos worth my while. But until next time, this is me, William Lees with Sports Betting Truth, signing off.